Docking and berthing of spacecraft is the joining of two space vehicles. This connection can be temporary, or semi-permanent such as for space station modules. Docking specifically refers to joining of two separate free-flying space vehicles. Berthing refers to mating operations where an inactive module – vehicle is placed into the mating interface of another space vehicle by using a robotic arm. Because the modern process of unberthing is manually laborious, berthing operations are seen as unsuited for rapid crew evacuations in the event of an emergency. Topic: <laughs> Docking states. A docking berthing connection is referred to as either soft or hard. Typically, a spacecraft first initiates a soft dock by making contact and latching its docking connector with that of the target vehicle. Once the soft connection is secured, if both spacecraft are pressurized, they may proceed to a hard dock where the docking mechanisms form an airtight seal, enabling interior hatches to be safely opened so that crew and cargo can be transferred. topic history topic <inaudible> <inaudible> docking spacecraft docking capability depends on space rendezvous the ability of two spacecraft to find each other and station keep in the same orbit this was first developed by the united states for project gemini it was planned for the crew of Gemini 6 to rendezvous and manually dock under the command of Wally Shira, with an uncrewed Agena target vehicle in October 1965, but the Agena vehicle exploded during launch. On the revised mission Gemini 6A, Shira successfully performed a rendezvous in December 1965 with the manned Gemini 7, approaching to within one foot, but there was no docking capability between two Gemini spacecraft. The first docking with an Agena was successfully performed under the command of Neil Armstrong on Gemini 8 on March 16, 1966. Manual dockings were performed on three subsequent Gemini missions in 1966. The Apollo program depended on lunar orbit rendezvous to achieve its objective of landing men on the Moon. This required first a transposition, docking, and extraction maneuver between the Apollo Command – Service Module CSM Mother Spacecraft and the Lunar Module LM Landing Spacecraft, shortly after both craft were sent out of Earth orbit on a path to the Moon. Then after completing the lunar landing mission, two astronauts in the LM had to rendezvous and dock with the CSM in lunar orbit, in order to be able to return to Earth. The spacecraft were designed to permit intravehicular crew transfer through a tunnel between the nose of the command module and the roof of the lunar module. These maneuvers were first demonstrated in low Earth orbit on March 7, 1969, on Apollo 9, then in lunar orbit in May 1969 on Apollo 10, then in six lunar landing missions. Unlike the United States, which used manual piloted docking throughout the Apollo and Space Shuttle programs, the Soviet Union employed automated docking systems from the beginning of its docking attempts. The first such system, IGLA, was successfully tested on October 30, 1967 when the two uncrewed Soyuz test vehicles Cosmos 186 and Cosmos 188 docked automatically in orbit. This was the first successful Soviet docking. Proceeding to manned docking attempts, the Soviet Union first achieved rendezvous of Soyuz 3 with the uncrewed Soyuz 2 craft on October 25, 1968. Docking was unsuccessfully attempted. The first manned Soviet docking was achieved on January 16, 1969, between Soyuz 4 and Soyuz 5. 
This early version of the Soyuz spacecraft had no internal transfer tunnel, but two cosmonauts performed an extravehicular transfer from Soyuz 5 to Soyuz 4, landing in a different spacecraft than they had launched in. In the 1970s, the Soviet Union upgraded the Soyuz spacecraft to add an internal transfer tunnel and used it to transport cosmonauts during the Salyut space station program with the first successful space station visit beginning on 7 June 1971, when Soyuz 11 docked to Salyut 1. The United States followed suit, docking its Apollo spacecraft to the Skylab space station in May 1973. In July 1975, the two nations cooperated in the Apollo-Soyuz test project, docking an Apollo spacecraft with a Soyuz using a specially designed docking module to accommodate the different docking systems and spacecraft atmospheres. Beginning with Salyut 6 in 1978, the Soviet Union began using the uncrewed Progress cargo spacecraft to resupply its space stations in low Earth orbit, greatly extending the length of crew stays. As an uncrewed spacecraft, Progress rendezvoused and docked with the space stations entirely automatically. In 1986, the IGLA docking system was replaced with the updated KERS system on Soyuz spacecraft. Progress spacecraft received the same upgrade several years later. The KERS system is still used to dock to the Russian orbital segment of the ISS today. <laughs> Berthing. Berthing of spacecraft can be traced at least as far back as the berthing of payloads into the Space Shuttle payload bay. Such payloads could be either free-flying spacecraft captured for maintenance, return, or payloads temporarily exposed to the space environment at the end of the remote manipulator system. Several different berthing mechanisms were used during the Space Shuttle era. Some of them were features of the payload bay e.g., the payload retention latch assembly, while others were airborne support equipment e.g., the flight support structure used for HST servicing missions. <laughs> <laughs> Hardware Androgyny Docking – Berthing systems may be either androgynous ungendered or non-androgynous indicating which parts of the system may mate together. Early systems for conjoining spacecraft were all non-androgynous docking system designs. Non-androgynous designs are a form of «gender mating» where each spacecraft to be joined has a unique design, male or female, and a specific role to play in the docking process. The roles cannot be reversed. Furthermore, two spacecraft of the same gender cannot be joined at all. Androgynous docking and later androgynous berthing by contrast has an identical interface on both spacecraft. In an androgynous interface, there is a single design which can connect to a duplicate of itself. This allows system-level redundancy role reversing as well as rescue and collaboration between any two spacecraft. It also provides more flexible mission design and reduces unique mission analysis and training. List of mechanisms, systems <inaudible> Adapters A docking or berthing adapter is a mechanical or electromechanical device that facilitates the connection of one type of docking or berthing interface to a different interface. While such interfaces may theoretically be docking, 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 berthing, or berthing, berthing, only the first two types have been deployed in space to date. 
Previously launched and planned to be launched adapters are listed below. ASTP docking module, an airlock module that converted US probe and drogue to APAS-75. Built by Rockwell International for the 1975 Apollo-Soyuz test project mission. Pressurized mating adapter PMA, converts an active common berthing mechanism to APAS-95. Three PMAs are attached to the ISS, PMA-1 and PMA-2 were launched in 1998 on STS-88, PMA-3 in late 2000 on STS-92. PMA-1 is used to connect the Zarya control module with Unity Node 1, space shuttles used PMA-2 and PMA-3 for docking. International Docking Adapter IDA, converts APAS-95 to the NASA Docking System NDS. An IDA will be placed on each of the ISS two open PMAs, both of which will be located on Node 2 Harmony Module. IDA-1 was planned to be launched on SPX CRS-7 until its launch failure, and attached to Node 2's forward PMA. IDA-2 was launched on SPX CRS-9 and attached to Node 2's Zenith PMA. The adapter will be compatible with the International Docking System Standard IDSS, which is an attempt by the ISS Multilateral Coordination Board to create a docking standard. Topic: <laughs> Docking of uncrewed spacecraft. For the first 50 years of spaceflight, the main objective of most docking and berthing missions was to transfer crew, construct or resupply a space station, or to test for such a mission e.g. the docking between Cosmos 186 and Cosmos 188. Therefore, commonly at least one of the participating spacecraft was manned with a pressurized habitable volume e.g. a space station or a lunar lander being the target the exceptions were a few fully uncrewed soviet docking missions e.g. the dockings of cosmos 1443 and progress 23 to an uncrewed salyut 7 or progress m1-5 to an uncrewed mir Another exception were a few missions of the manned U.S. space shuttles, like berthings of the Hubble Space Telescope HST during the five HST servicing missions. Changes to the «manned» aspect began in 2015, as a number of economically driven commercial dockings of uncrewed spacecraft were planned. In 2011, two commercial spacecraft providers announced plans to provide autonomous, teleoperated uncrewed resupply spacecraft for servicing other uncrewed spacecraft. Notably, both of these servicing spacecraft were intending to dock with satellites that weren't designed for docking, nor for in-space servicing. The early business model for these services was primarily in near-geosynchronous orbit, although large Delta V orbital maneuvering services were also envisioned, building off of the 2007 Orbital Express mission—a U.S. government-sponsored mission to test in-space satellite servicing with two vehicles designed from the ground up for on-orbit refueling and subsystem replacement. Two companies announced plans for commercial satellite servicing missions that would require docking of two uncrewed vehicles. Space Infrastructure Servicing is a spacecraft that was being developed by Canadian aerospace firm McDonald, Detweiler and Associates MDA, maker of Canadarm, to operate as a small-scale in-space refueling depot for communication satellites in geosynchronous orbit. Intelsat was a requirements and funding partner for the initial demonstration satellite, intended for launch in 2015. Mission Extension Vehicle MEV, was a spacecraft being developed in 2011 by the U.S. firm Vivisat, a 50 50 joint venture of aerospace firms U.S. Space and ATK, to operate as a small scale in space satellite refueling spacecraft. MEV would dock but would not transfer fuel. Rather it would use 
its own thrusters to supply attitude control for the target. The CIS and MEV vehicles each plan to use a different docking technique. CIS plan to utilize a ring attachment around the kick motor. While the mission extension vehicle would use a somewhat more standard insert a probe into the nozzle of the kick motor approach, a prominent spacecraft that received a mechanism for uncrewed dockings is the Hubble Space Telescope HST. In 2009 the STS-125 shuttle mission added the soft capture mechanism SCM at the aft bulkhead of the space telescope. The SCM is meant for unpressurized dockings and will be used at the end of Hubble's service lifetime to dock an uncrewed spacecraft to de-orbit Hubble. The SCM used was designed to be compatible to the NASA Docking System NDS interface to reserve the possibility of a multi-purpose crew vehicle docked mission. The SCM will, compared to the system used during the five HST servicing missions to capture and berth the HST to the Space Shuttle, significantly reduce the rendezvous and capture design complexities associated with such missions. The NDS bears some resemblance to the APAS-95 mechanism, but is not compatible with it. Non-cooperative docking Docking with a spacecraft or other man-made space object that does not have an operable attitude control system might sometimes be desirable, either in order to salvage it, or to initiate a controlled de-orbit. Some theoretical techniques for docking with non-cooperative spacecraft have been proposed so far. Yet, with the sole exception of the Soyuz T-13 mission to salvage the crippled Salyut 7 space station, as of 2006, all spacecraft dockings in the first 50 years of spaceflight had been accomplished with vehicles where both spacecraft involved were under either piloted, autonomous or telerobotic attitude control. In 2007, however, a demonstration mission was flown that included an initial test of a non-cooperative spacecraft captured by a controlled spacecraft with the use of a robotic arm. Research and modeling work continues to support additional autonomous non-cooperative capture missions in the coming years. Salyut 7 Space Station Salvage Mission Salyut 7, the tenth space station of any kind launched, and Soyuz T-13 were docked in what author David S. F. Portry describes as, "...one of the most impressive feats of in-space repairs in history." Solar tracking failed and due to a telemetry fault the station did not report the failure to mission control while flying autonomously. Once the station ran out of electrical energy reserves it ceased communication abruptly in February 1985. Crew scheduling was interrupted to allow Russian military commander Vladimir D. Zarnibekov and technical science flight engineer Viktor Savanik to make emergency repairs. All Soviet and Russian space stations were equipped with automatic rendezvous and docking systems, from the first space station Salyut 1 using the IGLA system, to the Russian orbital segment of the International Space Station using the Kurs system. The Soyuz crew found the station was not broadcasting radar or telemetry for rendezvous, and after arrival and external inspection of the tumbling station, the crew judged proximity using handheld laser rangefinders. D. Zarnibekov piloted his ship to intercept the forward port of Salyut 7, matched the station's rotation and achieved soft dock with the station. After achieving hard dock they confirmed that the station's electrical system was dead. Prior to opening the hatch, D. Zarnibekov and Savanik sampled the condition of the station's atmosphere and found it satisfactory. Attired in winter fur-lined clothing, they entered the cold station to conduct repairs. 
Within a week sufficient systems were brought back online to allow robot cargo ships to dock with the station. Nearly two months went by before atmospheric conditions on the space station were normalized. Topic uncrewed dockings of non-cooperative space objects Non-cooperative rendezvous and capture techniques have been theorized, and one mission has successfully been performed with uncrewed spacecraft in orbit. A typical approach for solving this problem involves two phases. First, attitude and orbital changes are made to the chaser spacecraft until it has zero relative motion with the target spacecraft. Second, docking maneuvers commence that are similar to traditional cooperative spacecraft docking. A standardized docking interface on each spacecraft is assumed. NASA has identified automated and autonomous rendezvous and docking, the ability of two spacecraft to rendezvous and dock operating independently from human controllers and without other backup, and which requires technology advances in sensors, software, and real time on orbit positioning and flight control, among other challenges, as a critical technology to the ultimate success of capability facilities such as in-orbit propellant storage and refueling, and also for complex operations in assembling mission components for interplanetary destinations, the Automated, Autonomous Rendezvous and Docking Vehicle is a proposed NASA flagship technology demonstration mission, for flight as early as 2014–2015. An important NASA objective on the proposed mission is to advance the technology and demonstrate automated rendezvous and docking. One mission element defined in the 2010 analysis was the development of a laser proximity operations sensor that could be used for non-cooperative vehicles at distances between 1 meter and 3 km Non-cooperative docking mechanisms were identified as critical mission elements to the success of such autonomous missions. Grappling and connecting to non-cooperative space objects was identified as a top technical challenge in the 2010 NASA Robotics, Tele-Robotics and Autonomous Systems Roadmap. Topic: <laughs> Birthing spacecraft and modules. Docking and undocking describe spacecraft using a docking port, without assistance and under their own power. Berthing takes place when a spacecraft or unpowered module cannot use a docking port or requires assistance to use one. This assistance may come from a spacecraft, such as when the Space Shuttle used its robotic arm to push ISS modules into their permanent berths. In a similar fashion the Poisk module was permanently berthed to a docking port after it was pushed into place by a modified Progress spacecraft which was then discarded. The Cygnus resupply spacecraft arriving at the ISS does not connect to a docking port, instead it is pulled into a berthing mechanism by the station's robotic arm and the station then closes the connection. The berthing mechanism is used only on the U.S. segment of the ISS. The Russian segment of the ISS uses docking ports for permanent berths. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Mars surface docking. Docking has been discussed by NASA in regards to a crewed Mars rover, such as with Mars Habitat or Ascent Stage. 